Well, good morning from the Cottage Farmstead. I'm Rebecca. And this is a video we've been meaning to film for probably about two or three weeks now. We had filmed a few back to back and we're taking a little bit of a break over the Thanksgiving holiday. And then we I finally finished our house. We got occupancy and then we were moving and the camera never came out. And today I was planning on taking out and taking a look at our fall garden. Um, but it just poured for the last about eight hours and it's just pure mud and it's still raining right now. Also, um, the deer figured out how to get into our garden uh, this past week. The tomato twine that we used, um, we had done crisscrosses and it had deteriorated and snapped there. So they're able to jump through the center of it. They're not able to go over it. It's still too tall, but they're able to go through the middle part. And the last couple mornings um, I've woken up and set the dog on them to chase them out of the garden because they keep getting in and we don't have a whole lot left in our garden. The only thing they haven't touched is the garlic, which is normal, but the kale and chard and other greens that we had out there are pretty much done for. So there's not a whole lot to show you in our garden anymore, but there is a lot to show you here inside of the house. Since we have moved in, we've um, gotten settled. We got, you know, our closet and all of our kitchen set up and uh, we even decorated for Christmas. So I'll take you on a tour around the house. Just in the nick of time before we had this big rainstorm, we were able to get another load of gravel. So you can see behind me there, we have our driveway is complete. So now we don't have to slip and slide in the mud. Uh, we covered it up already with some mulch here, but there is, you know, tire marks and gashes. It's been pretty messy. Um, and we've been having to sweep and mop all the mud off from the dog's paws, trying to keep our boots at the door. We're still tracking a whole bunch of it in. Um, so we're definitely going to be planting over in this muddy areas that you see over here, some clover and oats and maybe some winter rye, just so that we have something to keep the mud down over the winter. But right here, what is considered more of like the main entrance to our house, which is our back door, we did put a whole bunch of mulch. We had some mulch left over from a previous gardening project. So we put it here right at the driveway so as people come in, we don't have to worry about mud. So we got that done just in the nick of time. Last night, actually, we finished that. So we will have a nice entrance into our house over the holiday season and we don't have to worry about muddy shoes. <laughs> As you can see, a whole lot has changed since the last time we showed a walkthrough of our farmhouse. We are actually living here. We moved in last week officially, full-time. Nathan had been living here part-time since um, late October. But we've been busy unpacking and cleaning everything because unfortunately everything in our basement, having sat there during the entire humid southern summers that we have, was covered in mold. And then we, on top of that, we had all the drywall dust that got into a lot of the boxes. So everything was just nasty. So it took twice as long to unpack everything because we had to clean and disinfect almost everything we unboxed. Um, that's one of the reasons why we have not unboxed certain things. So we have not been able to get to our books because we know that's going to be a big chore, especially if some of the boxes got mold in them, we may or may not be able to keep them. So that's a project that we're kind of waiting on for a cold, rainy, dark night when we have some extra time on our hands this winter to start going through those. We also don't have our bookcases finished. So that's another reason why we're kind of delaying that one. Didn't have to worry about it yet. Also, big bonus, Nathan's piano is here again. You can see it there in the background. In the old house, it was in a separate room because we didn't have space for it in our living room. And it's been really nice to have it here in the main living area of the house because I can hear it everywhere. So I can hear it even when I'm in our bedroom, all around the living room. So we're able to enjoy the music. So I'm able to enjoy his playing no matter where I am in the house. Ooh, my arm. So a big bonus is having Nathan's piano here right in the main room. So we can hear it whether we're in the living room, kitchen, dining room. In our old house, it was tucked away in one of the bedrooms because there wasn't space elsewhere in the house for it. And so it's been really nice to be able to listen to him play no matter where I am in the main living area. And the kitchen, it has been quite the saga trying to get this completed. So we bought the countertops for the kitchen back in October and discovered that they were bowed, bowed so badly that we couldn't even screw them. So 
Nathan spent a few weeks of misting the backs and putting weight on them, trying to bend them. They never, like after a month, they still had not flattened enough for us to use them. So we went back to Lowe's and said, hey, can we return these? Um, we hadn't cut them yet or anything. So we returned, were able to return them and we had to buy two non-mitered edges to work with. So we had to do our own miter. Thankfully, Nathan's dad was able to come and lend his expertise for us to help us get that joint in and get also this sink installed right here. Love our new sink. As it was a very tricky cut. Uh, we originally thought we had bought on Amazon a well, sink that could be an under or over mount sink. It turns out that we had a slightly different model number off by like one number and it was technically only an over mount sink, but we were able to convert it because it doesn't have too deep of a lip here. And all the thing we had to worry about was underneath there, there was little areas where they had the mounting brackets for undermount. So we just had to kind of cut some interesting notches, which was some pretty delicate work. Nathan did a great job working on it, but it did take an entire full day to get these installed, which was a lot longer than we thought, but we are super thankful to have family expertise and able to have them here. We actually still haven't even finished. I mean, you can see the uh, stuff everywhere, all over the counter. I haven't had a chance to fully unpack the kitchen, uh, as you can see behind me, there's just total chaos in the counter currently. Because we didn't have our counter and I knew it was going to be a dusty, messy process, I didn't want to unpack my kitchen into all the drawers and cabinets, especially since I was already having to clean them of the construction dust and mold. I didn't want to have to re-clean them a second time to put them away of the sawdust. So we kept everything out and so our kitchen's kind of been all over the place as we were living here for the first few days. But now that I have the counters, um, I'm gonna be unpacking slowly the kitchen, figure out where I want different things in here. And we are still hoping to add some shelving right here. So I still don't have a great place for like my spices and things. So those are gonna to continue to live on the bookcase I showed you all previously. I think last time I left off with us working in our master bath. So I'll go show you what progress we've made in there. Oh. So little Miss Daisy is the reason why I don't have a made bed most days is she really enjoys getting all snuggled down underneath the blankets. And if I don't put her under the blankets, she'll help herself and rearrange the bed so that she can be under the blankets. So especially on a cooler rainy day, this is her favorite place to be. I don't even know if she's been outside yet today. I'm probably gonna have to coerce her to go outside because she much rather be in bed. Very much an indoor doggy. And here we are. Here's our master bath. It is totally functionally complete. This is actually not how it's going to stay forever. Um, this was a vanity that we got for a good deal and we actually want it to ultimately be in our half bath because we want that to be a more Victorian looking bathroom. And we want a double vanity in here, but in order to move in, we found a free one on the side of the road and this one was a good price. So we got it all set up. It looks beautiful. I do enjoy it, but we do ultimately hope to have a double sink in here. And then we finally finished the shower. We're pretty excited about this vinyl tile that looks like subway tile. I mean, you really can't tell that it's not subway tile, but there's no grout. I won't have to ever clean grout in here of mold and mildew. And I'm very excited about that because it's pretty gross. So we are very happy with how that turned out. And because we don't have the double vanity with a lot of storage underneath it, a lot of our stuff is just sitting in a extra bookcase that we had. This originally was used for our, um, canning storage in our old house in the closet, but it fit perfectly right here between the window and the vanities. So we've been using it to hold all of our random bathroom things that didn't have space underneath the sink. In our hallway here, you can see that we still have very much the unpacking chaos uh, of things just floating around everywhere. But I was going to point out our washer and dryer. Here we did, they did manage to fit. That was something we were pretty concerned about during the whole build process. And we did have to have the framers move the frame over a couple inches because they built the house with six by six exterior walls, which was not actually in the plans that we gave the builder. And then we came out here and went, wait a second. Uh, we did all of our measurements for everything with four by four walls. So that was something we had to get a little bit creative on, but we did have an issue with our dryer. So our dryer has always had issues with the thermal control sensor. And so we had an extra one. We were anticipating, you know, the first time we were going to do laundry here that we're probably going to have an issue with it. And we did, 
but it turns out it wasn't the thermal control sensor this time. It was a part that attaches to it had gotten loose in transit. So that's something that you might want to check if you are moving your appliances around a whole lot because we were moving them all over our house while we were building. Um, check to make sure all your connections are there because what happened is it burned. The plastic melted and it got black. Thankfully, our sensor here is super sensitive, so it cut it off and we were here to hear it cut off and went, hmm, something went wrong. So we were able to troubleshoot that um, with some help from my dad. We figured out what little part we needed to fix it and Farmer Nathan was able to get it running again last night. So I'm looking forward to running a load of laundry today here and actually being able to dry it here. And one last place that has had some significant changes since last time is down in our basement. While we didn't have our kitchen cabinets available upstairs, we were using these wire racks down here to store a lot of items. And this will probably continue to be part of our pantry storage over here, especially for um, items that we don't use a whole lot or we use infrequently. Um, things like cookie cutters and spices that you only use at Christmas and those that ingredient that you only use in one recipe. So a lot of that stuff's gonna be kept down here along with some of our bulk storage. So we have like our big tub of salt down there, our extra bottles of olive oil. Uh, I think there's apple cider vinegar in a big gallon jug down there. So anything that's extra bulk will also stay down here. Another major feat the last few weeks is just running the dishwasher nonstop, getting all of those jars clean. They were all covered in construction dust, particularly that really fine drywall dust. So they are all clean. We are able to unpack all of the canned goods that we had um, from previous years. So canned goods are good for usually about two years. So we have plenty of tomato sauce to see us through one more year and then I'll be back to canning again the following year. And one last change that we have down here since the last time we filmed is this grow rack here. It's not lit up right now. We've been having it light up at night as we had a few issues with it tripping the breaker or the first few nights. So we're just making sure that there's no other problems with it since we had to rewire it when it got moved down here. But in here we have lots of little baby lettuce plants. So back in late October, early November, we had a really hard fluke frost really for our area. And there was something about the microclimate at the Anderson Growing Green family farms that zapped 4,000 heads of lettuce and it was barely to the freezing temperature. So they weren't really preparing for a hard frost when it was only about like 32, 33 degrees. So that was a pretty big setback, especially since they had already planted and invested in the transplant. So starting over a fresh here, so there's several reasons why they're growing in our basement right now. First off, we enjoy growing plant starts. I especially enjoy growing plant starts. Um, but we also have well water here, and that was an issue that they had over at Growing Green Family Farms. They are hooked up to the city water, and it just, it's hard on the plants. They don't thrive like they do on well or rain water. So seedlings will be happier here. Second, they have issues with mice getting into their propagation area over at Growing Green. So we have made this a super tight basement and so far no mice after we got the house all dried in. So no mice to eat all of the baby seedlings. And third, this is actually something that I'm going to be taking over in the coming months as I am planning on joining Growing Green part-time in the spring. And so I will be taking over a lot of the propagation. So having a propagation area in our basement is very convenient. Well, I hope you enjoyed a tour of our house instead of our garden on this wet, rainy and muddy day. As much as fun as it's been to share a house build, there'll probably be a little bit less of that content going forward as there's only so much more drywall we can show you because what we're doing upstairs is drywall. Building shelves is building cabinetry essentially. So a lot of that is gonna be fading out, but we, we are going to start spending a bit more time outside. We were really hoping to get cattle before the spring flush of growth on the pasture. So we'll be working on fencing. We also want to get the final grading done up front to start working on our garden. So there's a lot of stuff that we'll be doing outdoors this winter that we can't wait to share with you. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to follow our homesteading journey on a whole new scale as we've moved out of the suburbs onto 23 acres. And with that, I'll catch you next time.